Hey, I'm Frankie, and we're going to be talking about vegans and the environment. Now, people go vegan for so many different reasons. I love being vegan. I want to be vegan. I feel great. I had lost 30 pounds at that point. It can help the animals, our planet. And it's the impact on our planet that we're going to be talking about. In the US, there's been a 600% increase in the last three years. Over in the UK, numbers have risen by 350% compared to a decade ago. Take the vegan cheese industry, for example. That's expected to be worth $4 billion by 2020. Looking on Instagram, there's like 92 million posts when it comes to vegans. It's popular now, but it's not exactly a new thing. Back in 1849, that's when one of the first vegan recipes was published, and that was when someone used oil instead of butter and eggs. Then we had to wait a hundred years for the word vegan to be coined and that was done by this guy called Donald Watson. He created it and became a vegan after he heard and saw a pig being slaughtered on his uncle's farm. We're going to talk about meat and dairy in a bit but let's first focus on some of those vegan alternatives that provide you with things like calcium and protein. First up quinoa, it's a huge source of protein grown in the Bolivian Andes. Because quinoa was getting so popular, farmers were trying to grow it constantly and they weren't giving the soil a rest. Some of the soil was losing its fertility, um, which was really bad for the environment. Where quinoa is grown is where llamas graze. Some reports out of Bolivia were saying that because there's so much quinoa being grown, llamas were losing their homes and then farmers were selling the llamas to make room for quinoa. Poor little llamas. Next, take the soybean. It's packed full of vitamins and it's the foundation of loads of vegan foods. It's also one of the big ingredients when it comes to animal feed. Soybeans are grown on big, massive open fields and some are grown next to the Amazon rainforest. And because demand for the soybeans increased, that means some of the Amazon rainforest has had to be cut down. Some question though, because soybeans go into animal feed and they go into so many vegan products, whether actually if people stop eating animals and they turn to more vegan products, is that really going to have a difference? Because the demand might still be there. We should actually get some expert advice on this. I got in touch with a little mate of mine. Well, thank you, Frankie, for interrupting my holiday in Sicily. I'm Victoria Gill, science and environment correspondent for the BBC. And let me take just a moment to tell you about how if we all turned vegan, it could dramatically reduce the impact we have on planet Earth. That's according to a new study by scientists at the University of Oxford who crunched the numbers on meat and dairy production and found that while these animal products provide less than 20% of our calories, they use the vast majority of farmland, about 80%. Now, there are other things that individuals can do to make a difference to the environmental impact of what they eat, thinking about how far your food is transported, for example. But even in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, it's production rather than transportation that's really significant. Thanks, Vic. So let's take a look at the production of meat and dairy that she was talking about. Loads of the fields that we make and clear for animals, there's loads of deforestation, even when we're growing food for animals, that takes up loads of water. And lots of people say that, you know, all this water could be sending to countries that are de in desperate need of water. And what the UN says is the farming industry as a whole creates 15% of greenhouse emissions across the world. We did kind of fish out this advice um, from the UN. So Phoebe's going to um, kindly agree to read this statement out for us. The UN suggests having a mostly plant-based diet, focusing on seasonal and local foods, the reduction of food waste, consumption of fish from sustainable stocks only, and the reduction of red and processed meat. Thanks, Phoebe. So is becoming a vegan environmentally sustainable? Well, we picked out a couple of items just to show you how complex that issue is. And as we all try to do our little bit to save the environment, here's just one little thought to leave you with. We already produce one and a half times the amount of food to feed everyone on this planet. Okay, so that was one of our new YouTube explainers. If you liked it, you know what to do. Feel free to subscribe and comment below.